we have been given a I'm given a time limit for the session, very strong time limit. So uh, I plan to do a few songs here, but I'm going to cut all them down and just go to the. <coughs> there was a Vinayaka song, Ganesha song in English, which I have, but we'll skip that one. Uh, dear devotees, um, as some of you may know, that since, since Swami came into my life, uh, and I was, as you know, agnostic and atheist, I was a strong anti Sai Baba. Then something happened, my life changed. And then today, I tried to do Swami's work. And uh, songs started coming to me, now more than 1,300 songs are there. But, but among the songs that came were songs at one time, uh, when, when I was going around the world, I realized that everybody was waiting and as sister was urging people to come to join Seva, <coughs> Uh, I heard us urging people to come to do seva, and I used not. This not. It's not a phenomenon here. I think more people come for bhajan, and very few want to go do seva. You see, not realizing that seva is actually the way to get the grace. Okay, you know, bhajan is just to warm the pot. Okay, seva is the eating of the food, uh, but everybody wants to warm the pot and not eat the food. So what can we do? So anyway, what uh, there was a song that came to me, and that song that went, at which I cannot sing anymore. The song went like this. Don't cry for him when he's gone. Don't call his name when he's gone. Don't cry for him. Don't sing his name. Don't call his name when he's gone. It goes like that. But now it's already gone, so I can't sing that song anymore. Is it? And then the, the song we, we came subsequently came a song addressed to Ganapati what have you, asking him to cure Swami. So now we can't sing that song anymore. But after his recent Swami's uh, passing away, and this new song came and I want to share this, this song with you. Perhaps the people who are on the instruments have all disappeared, okay? Perhaps they can just join me and play some instruments, <laughs> if they can. So I'd appreciate that. How can I love you? More dear Sai Together How can More dear Sai Than I have Loved you Before Than I have Loved you Before How can I love you More dear Sai Now they say you are no more. How can I love you more, dear Sai? How can I love you more, dear Sai? Then I have loved you before. Then I have loved you before How can I love you more dear side? How can I love you more dear side? Now they say you are no more Now they say you are no more In the breeze I will feel your gentle touch in the breeze I will feel your gentle touch In the stars your twinkling eyes In the stars your twinkling eyes In the moon I will see your gentle face In the moon I will see your gentle face In the sun your beaming smile in the sun your be all together now how can i love you more dear sai than i have loved you before how can i love you more dear sai now you are no
see your smiling face as we have seen before as we before we will see your smiling face my lord we will see your face my lord i will see your smiling face my lord i will see your smiling face my lord in my heart forever go back home in my heart forever more all together now how can i love you more dear sai than i have loved you before how can i love you more dear sai now they say you are no in the stars your twinkling eye in the moon i will see your gentle face in the sun your beaming smile how can i love you more dear sir than i had love you oh how can i love you more dear sir now they say you are no as we have seen before we will see your smiling face my lord i will see your smiling face my lord in my heart forever more in my heart forever more in my heart forever more how can i love you I then I have loved you before how can I love you more now they say you are no more sir then what is Today we are in a phase, new era of Sati Sai, a new era where no more that we can cling to the physical form of Sai and go to Puttaputti to get grace. Every one of us now must cling to the cosmic Sai. In fact, we outside India have it easier. For example, I mean, all of us have been clinging. I've been actually looking at cosmic Sai. You know? When you sit here and sing bhajan, you are praying the cosmic sai. In your home, you are praying the cosmic sai. In Malaysia, everything I have done in Malaysia, all the big projects we have done, everything was just clinging to the cosmic sai and go. For those in India, in Puttapati itself, it will be different. So they wait for Swami's direction day by day. They should feel, but we have always, we will continue to cling to cosmic sai. But today, I am going to share with you an incredible thing that happened in my life in September this year. My last meeting with Swami. Little did I realize that that was the last meeting. Go brother. What should be the legacy of Satya Sai Avatar? Should Sai devotees play a role in fulfilling this legacy? This has been a burning question in my life for the last five years. Not just to keep his form in my mind, my pocket or altar, you know, but to keep his message in our mind and heart and help in some way to fulfill his divine mission. The question is now, I concept, the last three, four years, I've been burdened with one question. Why I've been burdened, I don't know, but this is me. I've been burdened. Swami, I, I've asked myself, what is your legacy? Other words, what will the world know you for in the years to come? Will the world, and this is the question now that I'll raise and we'll try to find some answers today. Go. What do you think is one of the greatest desires of the present devotees of Lord Rama, keep going, Krishna, Jesus, Lord Buddha, Guru Nanak, Prophet Muhammad? What do you think is one of the today's devotees of all these great lords, okay? What do you think is one passion they have, one desire they have in my life? Go. 
let me hazard a guess and that is this how i wish i had been there at the time of lord rama i would have been part of his weave how we wish i been there at the time of krishna i would be part of the gopis or the, or the pandava brothers how i wish i been there at the time of jesus i would have been one of the disciples with the how i wish i been how i wish how i wish how we would be crying you know but here what is as for sai i have often talked of this but it has come faster than i expected okay the question is now what will be the thought of every new new dude from today and forever more you know they're thinking how lucky i used to say a few years ago you know in future the devotees will be saying how lucky these people were you know who lived at the time of the kali yuga avatar but dear devotees how lucky from i was thinking to myself 100 years from now 200 years from now devotees, how lucky we were to live in the time of the kali yuga avatar how wish how lucky these people were but dear devotees it has come from from 24th april onwards onwards every new devotee will be thinking now how lucky these people were to have been born and walked at the same time of the kali yuga avatar the question is what have we made use of this opportunity what did we make use of the opportunity that those people think my god these people were standing there with the fulfilling the mission and vision of the avatar did we come and just sing song clap hands and go home or did we stand the front line like the pandavas did we stand the, at, like like the disciples of jesus or, or the disciples of buddha you know to fulfill the divine mission this is the question now that has plagued me and i'm trying to haunt everybody else with this question i'm sure every human being who adored a divine being would aspire for the same and i'm sure this will be the aspiration of every sai devotee who wants to play a role part in the divine mission but today did it would hardly a few months after bhagwan has left his mortal coils people are already trying to tear down his legacy we have heard news from india coming in now the media and all is trying to tear down his legacy so dear devotees the question is if sai devotees do nothing to uphold his world legacy we will by sheer sin of omission and inaction be abetting these mischievous makers can we stand in defense of his world legacy not by condemning the mischief makers but by action on the ground to fulfill his mission let this baba say don't worry about the guys the dog howling at the moon neither should be worry but what are we doing on the ground this is the question if we all individually and collectively can help to maintain some small way the enduring legacy of avatar we have made a success of all at least i feel if i can help in some small way to fulfill the enduring legacy of this avatar then my life is fulfilled The question is how many want to be part of the enduring legacy of the Sai? Dear Sai family, reflect what should be the legacy of Sai Avatar? What should be the generations of the future? Remember him for and his contribution to humankind. In future generations, in next ten years, twenty years, thirty years, what should the world think of as the world legacy of Satya Sai? Not the Indian legacy, you know, the world legacy. Go. what should be the sai legacy for the world should it be the two super special hospitals in india is a legacy for the world should it be the university and colleges in india should it be the water project in india should it be the new few sai schools in foreign nations should it be the small group of sai youths all over the world uh, singing sai ram sai ram sai ram and singing allah buddha ji allah buddha in the little little groups we have and thinking by singing allah buddha jesus the whole world will become unit, united you know we don't make any effort to reach out you know, we just sit down and sing allah buddha jesus saying that you are seeing allah buddha jesus whole world that unity of faith in the world the question is what are we doing to make the songs into a reality in the world what should be his legacy dear devotees what is the legacy of rama what or who do we think do we think of and think of rama who do we think of and think of rama ha huh? dharma but who do we think of who do we think of when we think of rama automatically ha huh? correct anuman here we are we think of anuman we think of bharata who gave his throne look lakshmana we think of even vibhishana who was the brother of 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 ravana automatically you know because why why do you think of them because they were the ones who helped fulfill Ra- rama's mission go when you think of krishna what what is the legacy of krishna krishna did not leave buildings and bending krishna's legacy was the uh, go back go back one then what is krishna's legacy dear devotees he left he left a message to the world and he fulfilled the message in his in his lifetime with the help of his of his followers 
And likewise, what are the enduring legs of Christ, the Buddha, Nanak, the list goes on. The devotees, how did, how did the, the Christ make get around the world? Christ only, was, Christ disappeared at the age of 15, 30 he came back again, 33 years he preached, then he was crucified. Only three years, no other God-man has preached for three years only. And his message became a world legacy. Why? Because of his disciples. Look at Buddha. Buddha did not go to China and Japan. How did, how did the, the, the message of Buddha reach to China and Japan? Through his disciples. Dear devotees, it is the disciples, the devotees, these great God-men and saints did not leave behind any buildings or institutions. Their legacy was their devotees. The legacy of Rama was Anuman, legacy of Pandavas was there. All these great devotees were their legacy. They motivated them, gave the fire in them to spread the world mission. What was the enduring legacy of these devotees? The legacy of the master were the devotees. What was the enduring legacy of these devotees? They helped fulfill the mission of the avatars and godmen. Every avatar and godmen had came with a mission. But none of them actually fulfilled their full mission in their lifetime, you know. They just lighted, ignited a fire. The devotees sent this flame around the world and became the legacy they left behind. Now look at Satya Sai. He hasn't got 11 devotees. Buddha maybe had 15 devotees, I don't know how many he had. Baba leaves millions of devotees. Can you imagine the titanic waves that we can shake the world with, with the devotion and love? If we want to implement his vision and mission. They created a titanic shift in consciousness, society and nations of their time, all these great godmen. So what should be the legacy of Satsai Avatar? His greatest legacy must surely be his devotees. In as much as, in as much as, go brother, for Rama, it was Anuman, from Anuman to the squirrel, you heard the story of the squirrel, right? The squirrel story, all of you know, you not go read up the Ramayana. Rama, you know? I have no, no time for this, because time is short. For Krishna, as you know, the Pandavas, all of us know the Pandavas, but dear devotees, more than the Pandavas, the unknown soldiers who gave their lives in the battle of Kurukshetra, whose names we do not know, they took part in the great mission of the Dwapara Yoga avatar, Krishna. Likewise, what the enduring legacy of Christ, Bodha, I've told you, told you, this goes on. How did the message endure? It is the work of the devotees that manifested the message. This one thing we must remember, you know. Someone asked me, Jaga, do you think what, what all this God requires man's help to fulfill? Yes, without the devotees, this message of great beings. The, devo the, the great masters come to motivate the people to manifest the legacy. They can do it himself. If, if Ravana, do you think Ravana, do you think Rama, why did, if Rama, if you all believe him to be the divine being there, you think Rama must come down on earth in human form to go and kill Ravana? My God, he could have sat there in Devaloka and said, okay, Ravana, heart attack, finish. <laughs> Ravana is dead. What is that? Why should he come down? You think Krishna, to wipe out the Pandavas, you know, he should have come down? He could have said, okay, plague, finish, all the world died. But he came down, why? To give the devotees a chance to take part in his mission. Krishna, in the great war of Mahabharata, Krishna did not lift a weapon. He was just a chariot. His devotees fought the war. Now, I want to show you something. I saw a Chinese movie, Confucius. This movie moved me so much, you know, that I want to share this with you. Dim the lights, please, for a while. Hold on. Can you dim the lights? Can someone dim the lights? Dim the lights for a while. Let me brief you what's happening here. Okay, one second. Let me brief you. Confucius, all of you know Confucius? Yeah. Hello, all of you know, very good. Okay, it's not that Chinese are confused, okay? The Confucius is the name of the master, okay? And, and uh, what happened is, Confucius was the advisor to the emperor. Emperor's advisor. He advised the emperor so much, the emperor became famous and well rich. But what happened was, the emperor then wanted to expand his empire and wanted to conquer other people. Confucius warned against that. Empire did not want this advice anymore. He said, why are you restricting me? The empire then banished Confucius from his kingdom, from his uh, little, little god, I think, and, uh, from his palace and left him. So Confucius then, with his devotees, with his devotees, Confucius then left the kingdom and started going around China advising all the speaking, speaking, speaking. And like Swami's message we recorded today, Confucius devotees began to record the words of Confucius. But they recorded in, in wooden slabs, you know, like, like India, they have this, all have these leaves. In China, they're using the wooden slabs, okay? They write and then they put it into scrolls like the wooden slabs. Now, and all the slabs are put onto a cart as they went, you know, to come from, from town to town, city to city in China. 
One day, Constantine getting older and older and older, he had one disciple who was a favorite disciple, who really was, was, was dedicated to, 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 to uh, Confucius. And one day, it was winter. In winter, the, 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 the caravan of people were moving across the, the country and they came to a huge lake, frozen lake. This scene now you see now is the scene of the frozen lake. And through the mist, you will see the caravan of Confucius. The role of Confucius played by this famous Chinese actor, Yao Chao Yan Fat, okay? And, and, and this is, you'll see here slowly, and then, but little bit, this is the view from under the ice. As you're walking through this, this, uh, this, uh, over the ice, that's Confucius sitting on there with his follower. This is his, his, main, his main disciple, his loving disciple. That's, a, that's the teachings of Confucius, the message of Confucius. As they walk along the ice, as they move along the ice, suddenly, what's the sound, he asks. What's the sound? Then they realize now the ice is cracking. They've got to get across, okay? What's the sound? They're moving across now. What's the sound? And the ice is cracking. Move, move, move. Hurry up, hurry up. And they began to rush across again. Okay? But, but this vehicle containing couldn't take the weight. It, 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 the ice wake and the, and the vehicle. Now watch what happened now. The most moving scene I've seen in my life, okay, actually. This disciple of Confucius, okay? who could have easily got out and escaped. All of them came up and said, come on, hurry up, get, get out of the ice, get out of the ice. Where are you? Come out, come out. He refused to come out. He, he dived and went to save the, the, the scrolls, the, the, the wooden, wooden scrolls of Confucius. He dived in, he came, went up again, went up, 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 he went up. And his master, his master, where are you, Hui? The guy said, Hui, where are you, Hui? Come out, come out of the ice, come out, Hui, come out of the ice, Hui. Come out of the water. Hui came in, he looked, he threw the message of Confucius you know, onto the shore and then and the master saying, come, come, he's looking at the master, he, he ignores the master's voice, he goes down again, he, he ignores the master saying, come, but this man, disciple, ignores the master and goes down again, he goes down, 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 and to save more of the scrolls, okay? And he comes up again, he comes up again and he throws more of the scrolls, Confucius says, you know, come back, come, come. Come, come, they throw string at him. He looks at the master one time, goes down again. He goes down again. He goes down again. Dear devotees, he dies. He dies because he did not want the master's message to be lost. Because he realized that the master's message is what must endure. The form will go, but the message must remain. Because that's his, because of devotee like him, the legacy of Confucius continues to this day. He gave his life, not to protect the physical form of the master, but to protect the message of the master. Confucius then that he, he Confucius remembers the time of the young man, how he first met him, and then he's devoted. And he's holding his, his disciple now. And other, other disciples come and say, come, eat, eat. You're not eating anything for so long. The master is so grateful to his devotee for preserving his message. Cut the, stop it, stop it now. Okay, we can stop it now. Brother, hello. <laughs> you can stop it now. Yeah. I know you like the movie, brother, but a little more. Lights, please. So what is the message? What is the moving message here, Swami? The message of the Master. His mission and vision must endure. That is the most important thing. 
I've, I've, I've talked about this movie so many times now. But every time I think, see this thing, I, I cannot help but, but fear my God. Swami, the real, the devotee realized that the message of the Master is, is, is his legacy. It's the devotees who must preserve and manifest the legacy and preserve it for posterity. And today, our Master, the avatar, no confusion with the teacher, you know, he yeah, the avatar of the Kali Yuga. Can you imagine what should be our role? Sit down and sing songs every week, clap hands once in a while, go here, there, everywhere. What is the world legacy? What should the world thank the avatar for in years to come? How did the message of, the of, of God men spread? Who upheld, upheld and promoted the legacy? We saw can now take Jesus Christ. A quick one. Devotees, are de are devotees, the devotion of devotees. Do you know how the apostles died? Sacrifice for their master. Quickly now, we just go through. Okay, you all can go. Matt, Matt, go on. Suffered martyrdom in Ethiopia, killed by the so go on. Keep going. Mark died in Alexandria, dragged by horses to the streets. Like Luke, hanged in Greece, the result of his tremendous preaching. Good. Go on. John faced martyrdom, boiled in the huge basin of boiling oil. <coughs> He, 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 succeeded, he, he survived that, he was put in prison and he started writing all these things but he died as an old man and the only apostle died peacefully. Go. Oh. Peter, Peter, crucified upside down on the cross. Why? Because he didn't want to be crucified the, 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 the other way because unworthy died the same way as Jesus Christ, he said. G, James, the leader of the church in Jerusalem was thrown over 100 feet down the south of the pinnacle from the temple that he refused to deny, deny his faith in Christ. When he discovered he survived, they beat him to death, okay? Go. Go. James the Great, son of Zabira, fisherman by trade. Jesus called him lifetime ministry, strong leader, ultimately beheaded in Jerusalem. Watch this now. The Roman officer guarded James, amazed that James defended his, his faith in his trial. Later, the officer walked beside James to the palace of execution. Overcome by conviction, he declared his new faith to the judge and knelt beside James to accept the beheading as a Christian. Bartholomew, go. 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 Mart mart martyred, okay, flayed the death by whip. Jude, killed with the arrow, refused to deny his faith. Matthias, a person chosen to, to replace the traitor Iscariot, stoned to death. Andrew, crucified on x shaped cross. Go on. Go on. I'm moving so fast because I'm given so much time, okay. Paul was tortured and beheaded, okay, by, by Roman emperor. Go on. Dear friends, go back. Go back one. Dear friends, Swami doesn't want to die for you. Swami doesn't want us, he has died, he has gone already. The question is now, what are we going to do? What sacrifice? They sacrifice their life for their master. Are we lesser? Not to sacrifice our life, to sacrifice our time. You know, once, since we are talking about, I know I haven't talked about this, once many years ago when I was in Whitefield, I was, I was building our altar, you know, in the Sai Center in Malaysia and I bought a, cr a beautiful Christ. Uh, there's a black cross with, with, a, with a Christ, silver Christ on it, okay? I, and I wanted Baba to bless it. And Baba called me into the interview room and I saw me bless this Christ, I said. So I held the Christ in the hand for virtually for the whole, whole interview, you know. And he said, you see, take this, tell the world, tell the world when they see this Christ on the cross, it must remind them of the great sacrifice that Christ made for mankind. And it must want, motivate them to want to sacrifice some part of their life, some part of their time for their fellow man. If this reminder is not achieved, it is only a decoration. For Sai, it must surely be all of us and the hundreds and thousands, nay, millions of devotees around the world to preserve and manifest the legacy, not to die for him, but to live and fulfill our own lives. So what should be our enduring legacy to help fulfill the mission of the Sai Avatar? Is a question, I tell you, this question has been plaguing me for three, four years. Why? I asked my Swami, what are we doing in this world today? I'm asking, but in Malaysia too, you know, what do we do? We are doing poor feeding, kitchen feeding, we go to old folks home, we go to laparosorium, we have medical camps, we are this and the other. We do, a, we do the work that thousands of other NGOs are also doing. 
Good work. I'm not saying it's very good work. Thousands of other NGOs we are doing. How come these thousands of other NGOs are able to do, or able to do all this without Avatar coming and telling them to do it? Are we the specially selected stupid people of the world that Avatar must come and tell us to do what thousands of NGOs are doing without Avatar telling them? Then I asked myself, Swami, what is your legacy? What can be? If all the others think, are we doing the same thing? What, why have you come? Then I thought to myself, Swami, if you have come, only for three reasons. Number one, governments are failing to do something. Religions are failing to do something. Money cannot buy. Dear devotees, if our governments can do, why should, if government, why should Avatar come? If religions can achieve it, why should Avatar come? If money can do it, why should Avatar come? So what is it now today in this world, in this critical time of human civilization, that the Avatar had to come to help in this incredible thing that all these forces are failing to do? Dear devotees, it's, the message stands in our face, you know, every center around the world, and yet we often remain blind. In fact, I'm happy to see this is actually one of the few centers I've seen now in America who actually has this thing in front of them. And that is, the two world symbols give a hint of his legacy. Number one, the Sarva Dharma symbol, and number two, the values which you have here in front of you. I've rarely seen this in any other center here in, 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 in America. You know. Dear devotees, this is a legacy. Staring at us in our face, you know. Now let's see what it is. Unity of faith. Not merely a symbol we decorate the altar with, or for which we sing songs and clap our hands, you know. But as a living legacy of Avatar who fought the unity of faith in a world where religious conflict could trigger the next world war. No other time in human history, religion could trigger the next world war, you know. Look at what's happening around here. America, you, what, in, in Middle East, in Middle East there were the Jews and, and, and the Christians. Within Mis Middle East itself, the Christians and, and the Muslims and the Muslims. Look at uh, UK, the Protestants and, and, and Catholics. Look at uh, uh, Sri Lanka, the Hindus and the, and the, and the, and the, and the Singhalese. Look at Fiji, the Christians and the Hindus. Around the world, you know. Can you imagine? The, world, you know, the religions that God created that are supposed to unite mankind in love and caring and sharing Today becomes just about the only force that can trigger, trigger the next world war. That is why the avatar has come. Hey, what's happening down there? And I better go and sort this out again. Dear devotees, can we achieve this? Can we, Satisai movement, dear devotees, can we, instead of just singing, clapping hands, can we achieve unity of faiths? Can, it's difficult. You know, it's easy for us in medical camp, Malaysia also, we, we go medical, easy to medical camp, get doctors, go there, don't see, medic, come home, finish, that's what's over. Old folks home, medical home, all, all this we've done. And they continue so today. But it's easier to do, we go there and come back one day, half a day, half, a few hours, it's over. But can we be like the Pandavas and the, and the, and the devotees of Christ and the Buddha, who, who gave their lives, you know, not, not die, but they fulfill the mission. Day after day, year after year, you know. How can we become like that? The answer, can we achieve the answer is resounding yes. It's only because when I go around the world, you know, people tell me, Jaga, this is the dream you're having, you know, it's not possible. Not possible to unite all these people, you know. You're dreaming about this. I, I, I'm going to show you now what has happened in Malaysia. In a virtually Muslim declared, we are a, we are a virtually declared Muslim nation, okay. It's about 60%, 70% Muslims in Malaysia, about 25, 30% Chinese and about 8% uh, Indians and Hindus and Christians and, and Buddhists. The Sai Council took the initiative to form a friendship group for interreligious service. We, th we said, listen, it is easy if we all of us, Sairam, 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 happy, but can, do we have the heart? Do we have, you know what Baba says? Baba says, a time, Baba once said incredibly, this is seared in my mind, okay? Baba says, a time will come when people will not come to Prashanti Nalayam to feel Baba's love. When they meet my devotees, they must feel my love. My darshan must flow to you and through you to the world. That means our, we must be able to unite people, you know, in love. Are we able to do that? Is it possible? Everyone said, Jaga, you're dreaming. I said, okay, let's do it. So in Malaysia, I said, let's put testing. We did this. What we did was, September 11th was, 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 the, was the critical period. September 11th, the whole world the, what, decided to, what, uh, we decided in Malaysia, no more clapping hands, singing songs, and love Buddha Jesus. Let us make this happen. So what happened was in Malaysia, let me tell you, around the world, Around the world, everyone after September had, had began to have interfaith dialogue. Di everyone, all got together, Christian, all talking, talking, talking. But whenever we have dialogue, dear devotees, you know what happens? Dialogue. How can you have interfaith unity? That when the you know in the big hall will come, the Christians will come. They'll sit together as Christians. The M Muslims will sit together, one Muslim. The Buddhists will sit here, Muslim. The Hindus. Then they all the leaders will talk, talk. Then everybody goes home. But dear devotees, 
only so what happened in Malaysia there's a, all the religious leaders the Christian the Buddhist all got together to form an interfaith dialogue interfaith uh, meeting they had but 300 or 400 people packed this hall and all the religious leaders were there except Muslims in Malaysia the Muslims do not take part in any interfaith activity as a group because they are already majority you know they don't need to you see? so the individuals may come but this particular all of them the except Muslims but they invited me this religious invited me to speak because the Sai movement in Malaysia is known as a, for interfaith so they invited me to speak I didn't know what I was going to say you know I didn't have a PowerPoint that day I just sat down there so what should I say when I got up when I got up this is what I said I said dear brothers and sisters I said I said reverence holy men monks dear brothers and sisters I think all of us are wasting our time here I said. everybody was stunned you know what the, the guy madman talking you know I said let me tell you this why I'm saying this I said but the fact that you're in this hall here today shows you already believe in interfaith you enter this hall but tomorrow gentlemen if there is an interfaith conflict in Malaysia interfaith violence none of you will take a knife after each other none of us fat cats will take exactly none of the fat cats will take a knife after each other the people take the knife are those in the slum areas the squatter areas the poor areas they will take the knife you know it is they in these areas who must be convinced that interfaith is a living reality of unity and peace and love and caring and if we and if for some mental aberration we have we refuse to pray in another man's hall of prayer because we think we want to lock the omnipotent God into our own hall into our own form you carry on do that but nothing to prevent Hindus Muslims Christians uh, uh, Buddhists holding hands and serving the poor outside everybody applauded but no one did anything but that day I had an idea what we should do so we went around we met the we formed I went around I spoke to the Archbishop of, of the Catholic Church I spoke to Muslim leaders and all of them they knew the work we have done in Malaysia all of them agreed then to form this friendship group and these are religious groups apart from Angkatan Break is an Islamic youth group very very violent strong Islamic youth group they came in and said they said you, the Sai movement you are doing such good work in Malaysia we fully support you for the first time in the history of Malaysia Islamic youth group became part of an interfaith alliance then we had the Buddhist Mahavira, the Buddhist Mahavira, the, uh, the, the Catholic Church, the Council of Churches in Malaysia, the Malay Hindu Sangam, Gurudwara Council, and co we became the coordinators. Everyone except our leadership to coordinate this. Dear devotees, these are the leaders who formed the initial this thing, you know. Archbishop Babu and Damananda, this, this, this is the Protestant uh, leader, uh, Sangat Singh, oh, these are the guys who formed this first friendship group. What we did was we launched massive interfaith programs, we launched interfaith medical camps. See, that is our movement by itself. By ourselves, we have done thousand medical camps by ourselves. But now we began to join in, uh, medical camps for, uh, for two reasons: to serve the poor and to forge interfaith unity. And we had everybody. We joined together. We made sure that there, there are five doc Christian doctors, five Muslim doctors, five this. We had there be equal number of people coming in from all all groups to participate. And and the badges we were have interesting. We had badges enough for them. The badges won't show their names. The badges will show Christian, Catholic, Buddhist. So the people who are serving will know. This is the true interfaith alliance. This is what we then then we moved this thing to Fiji. The devotees, America. I took I went to Fiji once for an economic conference, and the Fiji devotees organized a symposium on the role of religion in nation building and building a caring society. I told the guys, listen, what you do, you invite all the religious leaders to talk about this same stuff. Every Christian leader will speak on this, Muslim leader speaks on this, what have you. Now I was the last speaker. All I did was got up and I spoke about what happened in Malaysia. As a result of that particular conference, dear devotees, the early 2002, okay, this is what I was invited to Fiji for, and, and, and we had this conference, okay, go on, go on. I told them about the friendship group, that's all. And what we've done in Malaysia, okay, and if I said in Malaysia, multiracial country, you can do it, surely you can do it in Fiji. The Prime Minister of Fiji was sitting in this audience and I asked him how many of you think it's worthwhile doing. Prime Minister and everyone put up their hand. Then we went ahead and I left the country. Dear devotees, I left the country after that, after the conference. And to the end of July, I received this message. And here's the ex I'll read to you now the extracts of this. Dear Brother Jagar, fun day for underprivileged children. More than 300 children took part, and all of them, volunteers from all different, different groups, religious and service, all took part in this event. Go. With Baba's grace, the representative from all major religious organizations joined hands. They had a fun day for handicapped children, okay? They brought all the handicapped children, and they had a big, big event. The chief guest of the Prime Minister, during this particular seminar we had, I asked, asked the Prime Minister, who, the Prime Minister put up his hand, supporting this event. 
Sir, will you come to the event? I said, he said, yes. He came with his wife, and then they devoted, a miraculous thing happened. See a miracle of devotion, okay? On 2nd August, the Prime Minister in his address in Parliament on the National Organization single the contribution made by such organization. And this is what he said. The exact quote from the Prime Minister in Parliament in Fiji. But let me also take the opportunity, Mr. Speaker, sir, to pay tribute to all members of our Indo-Fijian community. I acknowledge the sterling contribution of religious, cultural, charitable bodies. Organized to end this is generally thanking everybody for the service they've done. Okay? But then he continues. But it, I want to make special mention today of the visionary, far-sighted and committed young people in the Satisai Baba organization. Prime Minister of Fiji in Parliament, eh? go on. They come, from, he virtually told them what our cycle is all about. They come from different religious backgrounds, the voluntary service organized, open to people all races and religions. What brings the, and binds these young people together is the common acceptance of calling to serve this country and all its people through voluntary service and welfare and charitable work. So all these young people that organized a recent workshop on the role and contribution of our different religions to national recognition, the one I took part in, and nation building. Then he said, it was the same Satsai Baba. Can you how many times he mentioning Satsai Baba in parliament? Same Satsai Baba service that organized a Saturday outing for God's special children, the disabled, handicapped, abandoned, orphan children. My wife and I have been honored to be associated with this group. It is these young people who are pointing the right way forward. Then he says, they lead by example. Their actions speak louder than all the utterances in this honorable house. Dear devotees, the Prime Minister of Fiji, the Christian Prime Minister in the, in the Christian nation. In India, so many leaders are there who are Baba devotees, you know. Prime Minister, everyone, no one dares mention his name in Parliament. Here, you know why? By your work, you'll be known. They recognize the work of the Sai members. So then they said, they, they, they were so stunned, you know, that, they, that the Prime Minister uh, would make such a thing, they said, go on. Okay, then they said, you, Jaga, you started all this in Fiji, I want to thank you most sincerely. Okay, fine, go on. They, I did nothing, you know. I did nothing. All I did was to share to these people and experience what we've done in Malaysia, to show them it is possible. It is possible. <coughs> then, I took this to America. America, in 2006, I was invited to Little Rock, Arkansas, where in the Great Hall of Clinton, they organized a, a, a symposium, Bridge to the Future, Role of Religion and Ethnicity in Building a Caring Community in the Nation. And there was it launched by Major Jim Daly. There were panel discussions. There, there, were, there were two Christian, uh, two, uh, one Protestant leader, one Catholic leader, one, uh, one, uh, one uh, Sheikh. And there were so many organizations, you know, who were sponsoring this. The devotees. Again, all I did was share the experience of this, uh, of, of the Malaysian. And at the end of the session, I asked them, asked all three participants, guys, do you think such a thing is worth doing in Little Rock, Arkansas? Everyone put up their hands. The devotees, they formed a task force. They formed a task force to implement this agenda, of an interfaith agenda. In Tuesday, I was again invited to, for the launching of the first ever Harmony Health Clinic. Interfaith free health clinic to serve the poor. This was the session. Now, now this, this clinic is, is now in existence and they are going out helping the poor. A lot of miracles, a lot of miracles happened when they launched this, okay? This is possible. Only we must dare to reach our hearts out to our peers, and it's easy to go to the see, one day I tell people in Malaysia, easy for you to go and serve the hand that is re receiving like this, you know. Oh, you feel I'm helping you. But can you, do you have the heart to go and talk to people, or your people are equals, or those higher, the, the, the bishops and the bob and the chiefs, or all the religions, and get them all together in unity? Go, brother. Baba has said, my darshan must flow to you and through you to the world. This is our challenge. Can, must our darshan be limited to all our people and few homes you serve here and there? But can we expand our hearts to the world? He has said that we have the power to inspire and motivate, not by talk, but our actions. Now in Malaysia itself, not everybody, we're moving to a new level now for interfaith activity. In the Malaysia, in Malaysia recently, just in December last year, the, minister, the Department of National Unity of Malaysia, Muslim government, asked Satisai Baba Central Council to organize the first ever inter-ethnic cultural youth leadership camp. The subject was leveraging cultural diversity for national unity by the friendship group. The event was held in December 2010. The government of Malaysia can imagine approaching Satsai organization and the friendship group we have formed to form an interfaith youth camp. And the government funded the whole thing. Three days, hotel stay, food, everything for the, for the participants. Here's one example. Uh, here's one example, dear devotees, huh, of an interfaith initiative we took you know, by an NGO. We are an NGO in Malaysia, like, like all of you. And here's something within Malaysia to show again what's possible. Huh? 
a massive program we call ABC, Action for the Betterment of Community. Baba has said one thing that stirred my mind. He said, we have the power to transform. But have you ever tested it? Baba himself difficulty transforming some of the devotees. You know? But can we go and transform society, especially the negative people, the people who, they, who are not behaving well? Can we have the power to transform? Do we have the love to do that? We launched a massive program for ABC. What we did was, I approached the mayor of Kuala Lumpur, Action for the Betterment of Community, the mayor of Kuala Lumpur City, he was a Muslim gentleman. I said, show us the area that has the highest crime rate and give us three years to bring crime down, I said. Like a madman has spoken. The mayor said, are you sure you don't do it? I said, yeah. He said, why? I said, Baba says we have the power to transform. I want to test this, I said. So we formed the Interfaith Alliance. This area, many of us call it Sunpeng Flats. It's a high tenement, low cost area, poor area. You know what you call, you know, you call it tenement here? Tenements, tenements, okay, same thing. Listed by the police as a black area. High crime, high juvenile delinquency, vandalism, drug addiction. This is the area we walked into. The devotees, I, I was co-chairman of this event together with a Muslim gentleman. In Malaysia, Muslims should not take part in any, any other non-Muslim organization. But he, this guy said, Jaga, this work is fantastic. We will be happy to take part in this. I want to be co-chairman with him. So what happened? We had everybody's support. Every religious leader, everyone supported for Daddy, we went to the high crime area and we and we the police were the mayor said, get the police to come with you. I said, listen, police can come, but not in uniform. I said, we want them to come mufti, be as a volunteer. <coughs> we told the mayor of Kuala Lumpur we tried to bring crime down in the highest one of the high crime areas. Dear friends, the Sunpeng flats had this come 15,000 population here in the year. Muslims in the Malay, 7,000, uh, Chinese, 4,000, Indians, 3,000. A truly multiracial profile of Malaysia, and it was and and the and the and the uh, these are the various uh, the newspapers went crazy. You know they 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 so excited by the project they took many stories on this Sunpeng Plat. This the Pesta Muiba is is a, fest, a friendship carnival we had in the area. Gone. We organized anti-drug campaigns. We organized uh, medical camps in the area. We 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 organized uh, human value sports festivals. We organized human value song festivals, drama festivals anti-drug festivals. In the end of the three years, the devotees, we, I told the mayor, mayor, we are going to pull out. Because the sacrifice of the devotees is fantastic. Every day we had people on the ground, you know. You know, transform people's consciousness, you can't go once a week and go back home. Every day we had people on the ground. Every day. And in a high crime area. The devotees, end of the day, I told the mayor, we are pulling out. The mayor said, let me send my people to your area and, and see what the results you have done. And the devotees, the results were this. Vandalism was down by 80%. Crime rate down by 50 In one of the huge blocks of areas, uh, drug problem reduced by 80%. Youth hanging out, doing nothing in the lepak, wiped out. In another, another, another part of the thing, vandalism of 80%. Crime rate down by 90%. And drug problem reduced between. Here we, we didn't do much on this one, this area we also felt, but youth hanging out 50%. Here everybody is, go, go. So, we, I got, so this is just an example, go, keep going. We got, example of what is possible, okay? If you all decide to get together to do something daring. And then, okay, go on, keep going. Your time is short, so I'm going to go through this. Go, go on, go on, keep going, keep going, keep going. Okay, two things, dear devotees. We, must, we can only succeed, you know, in any great mission if two things in our mind. The cost must be noble, our motive must be pure. If you want God on our side, the cost must be noble, the motive must be pure. If then, no force, He becomes the wind beneath our wings, and no force can stop us. So now, the values, this, this was the interfaith symbol, how we brought interfaith unity. This is the value symbol, devotees. Let me quickly walk, walk through with you, okay? I see this, this, it, now we are out of, today in, around the world, every country, the river of civilization, every country is clogged up, you know? We have got, we have got logs and logs and logs all clogging up the river. And we have got so many problems, drug problems, anti-drug drug problems. We have wife of drug abuse, liquor abuse, wife abuse, child abuse. Uh, violence, crime, uh, husband abuse, you know, which is not so well publicized, you know. But all these, all these kind of things are there, you know. So the, the civilization is clogged up. And what happens, all the water, and, and parents are crying. Parents are crying, governments don't know what to do. The youth are the problem between 15 to 35. This is the trouble makers. After that, they, they're too old to cause any trouble, you see. But, and, and, and what's, how, do we, how do we tackle all this? I realize, Swami, even we are trying to do all this, you know, but how do we... Unlock this, this thing, let it flow in. Then I saw a movie where I saw this, 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 uh, this, this locks flowing in, in Canada and, and all get locked up. You know? And then there's one, one guy called the lock jam expert. He looks around and sees, which, he sees, ah, a few tricks, of course. He removes this, the whole thing began to flow. Swami, I said, what is the lock jam? 
what is the civilizational block jam? If we remove this, then the luck started flowing again. And then I was staring at this altar and my God, Swami, you are the role model for this, you know, Swami. What is the similar job plan? This, if we can, with our love, our motivation and plan of action, action plan, motivate all youth to nation to make one divine vow, we'll overcome 60, 70% of the power. What is the divine vow? It's a tough one, but it can be done. The vow is that every youth must make, I will never bring tears to my parents' eyes. Whatever I do, I'll only do it, it will make my parents happy and proud of me. If we can make action plans like this, so did everybody, let me summarize what happened. A lot of things that explains this, but let me summarize this. In September last year, I was in Puttapati and I had sent this document, I posted this document to Swami. And then I went and showed it to Mr. Chakravarti and the Srinivas of Michanai. I said, Jaga, you better show it to Swami. I was sitting on the veranda on September 22nd, Swami passed by, I put this on his lap. Did what is? Click, click, brother. Click, click. Keep on clicking. Keep on clicking until you see this picture here. Keep on clicking. Come on, keep clicking. Keep clicking. Okay, hold, hold it. Baba has given a challenge, you know, to all everyone. But no, everybody ignores all these great difficult things, you know, easy things to do. Baba says, you have, you have to love your parents wholeheartedly under all circumstances. Under all circumstances, you have to realize the truth that first and foremost, your mother is God, father is God. Our Sevadal and youth, our service wing and youth wing shall propagate such three things and try to as degeneration society. The result of degeneration because of this, the civilization is locked jammed. Dear devotees, do we dare accept this challenge? Go on. Then, this is the document. Dear devotees, can you imagine? I put this document in Swami's lap. And I read this out to him. Swami Satsai Avatar, his legacy, the role of side devotees helping to fulfill the mission, action agenda at offering Lotus Feet. Now, this is a very, very what, uh, uh, lengthy document. I knew Swami who learned. So, what I did was, I wrote, I handwrote here the entire summary of this in one page. And, I, and this is what I, I wrote here in this page. Go on. And I read out to him, okay, what should be the world legacy in the years to come? And rem remember that. I, what I meant was, I so go back. What I meant was, 20, after 2020, Little did I realize after September, September, few months later, the world legacy, is, his legacy must be there for the world, okay? So I, my humble offering, Swami, what did I say? Number one, interfaith unity, that Baba, through his devotees, united the world. Number two, made mother and father center of life for all, clear hope. I told Swami, Swami, no more Father's Day, Mother's Day, Swami. What happened Father's Day? The, the, the son and daughter buys a card uh, with a poem written by someone else and, and put, Dear Father, I love you, and gives the card to the mother and gives them flower. And Mother's Day, another card, same card is bought, another poem written by someone else. They give. Swami, that can, what we must have is hope agenda. Honor our parents every day. And have a program called Dharmic, not Dharmic Sons and Daughters. Noble Sons and Noble Daughters. But I want, did we should, we have, we have now, we have now programs, and it goes on here, details here, no? We have programs to, to, to honor best swimmer, best actor, best drama, best this, best. What we need now is noble sons and noble daughters, people who sacrifice for their parents. After they become independent, after they're earning money, are they prepared to sacrifice and care for their parents? Do you know in Singapore, I'm summarizing all this, everything is here in this document. And then I told him, Swami, your blessing for me to launch this world event, your son Jagadisan. Then I showed him these pictures that, 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 that later I'll show it to you. you know. I showed him this, this, these pictures here to make the, make the point about, about his mission, okay? Later you saw this. Ah, here we are. I said, Swami, look, look at this, Swami. Said, Swami, what, what do you have here, Swami? I said, all these events in, in Puttapati, you know, Christmas event, Buddha, Buddha, Purnima, even big, go, go back, go back. So many events we're doing in Puttapati, Swami. But what are we doing in our home countries? We're all putting drama in front of Swami, but are we doing in our home countries all this? What is Simon doing in all our home countries? Go. Swami, you, your mother, you became, you're the ideal son, so you're the role model. Your mother wanted a small clinic, small uh, a clinic, you built super special hospitals. Go. <coughs> you exceeded parental expectations. Swami, your mother wanted a small school, you built universities. You, you exceeded parents' expectations. Swami, your mother, your mother wanted, go. Your mother wanted a small well in Puttapati. You gave thousands of miles of water for Fatih. Swami, you exceeded parents' expectations. Swami, I said, should this be, can the Satisha Aghanadhi Swami do this to fulfill his mission? I went on and on like that <laughs> for five minutes in front of him and then gone. <coughs> and I said, Swami, look, here we are. Revitalizing tradition and culture, you know. All this we have, this Chinese New Year we are having in, 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 in Puttapati. Big, big program in Puttapati. Go on. Big Christmas program in Puttapati. Go on. Big Indian program in Puttapati. Big Muslim program in Puttapati. 
What are we doing in our home countries? All the dramas we do in front of Swami, are we doing in our home countries? This thing I told the Malaysian guys, you know, Malaysia guys, don't make a show. Do and then show Swami the result of our actions. Yeah, devotees, now I just wonder whether. So in Malaysia, we have got the government behind this program, the Hope Agenda. Here in this document here are the details of how the Hope Agenda can be launched. And I, I presented the program even to the Prime Minister, the President of Zambia. And he accepted this, this program to launch the uh, noble son, noble daughter in Zambia. So dear devotees, this is a challenge now. Okay, go on. The key is, dear devotees, to have a program that will capture the imagination of everyone. You know? that, that once it launched, others will take and run with it. Without, that's, a, that's the nature of, of, of revolution. You know, the negative revolution is not, no one is leading the negative revolution, it just goes by itself. The positive revolution must be such, such ideals that will be launched in society, in schools, in communities, they will take and run with it. This is the revolution. Go. Go on. Okay, this one, huh? No more Father's father, Day, Mother's Day, you can be there, but on up every day. And then the award. Let me just share, share this with you, okay? What made me launch this, this Dharmic, Dharmic Sun Dharmic Award, Noble Sun Noble Award? One girl. One girl in our Satisai Organ in Malaysia inspired me to do this. You know what, what she did? She, was, she went to London to do law. Three years law. She comes back to Malaysia, she must do the bar exam. They call it the bar exam. One year. Before she could start the bar exam, the devotees, she, her mother, contacted brain cancer. In Malaysia, we can hire Indonesian maids, Philippine maids at 250 US dollars a month. The family could have, wealthy, wealthy family, they could have hired two or three maids, you know. But this girl said, no. My mother looked after me when I was young. I will look after my mother. And she, no maids. She stayed at home. She threw her career away. She stayed at home for three and a half years, tending to her mother. As her mother's deteriorated, the brain began to go and go. And finally, mother was a vegetable. She used to wash her mother and clean her feces and everything, like a maid. But no like a daughter should, would have done years ago, okay? She did that. And finally, her mother passed away three and a half years. Then she sat for the bar exam, and she is now a lawyer. I gave her, I, I called her on stage and gave her the award for Dharmic daughter, you know, noble daughter. Mothers cried. I said, my dear, I said, you have, you have brought onto modern times a great ancient ideal. Dear devotees, then we launched this in, 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 in Zambia also, go. So dear devotees, these are some of the things now that if we, whether we, we, the question, go, go, keep going brother. The question is now, whether we want to do all these things is up to what, uh, the president of Zambia, you know, he accepted this, this, uh, the idea for this, the noble son, noble daughter. Eh? And the, at this, the shield, we, then we, we, we present, I told him, say, so you want the, we will present the shield to you. So we from, from Malaysia, yeah, yeah, for, we present to him a shield called, uh, president award for noble son, noble daughter, for Malaysia, you know, and we, we send it to him. Dear brothers and sisters, okay. So this is the end. So the question is now, dear devotees, whether you all feel, keep, keep clicking so that people can capture the images. Uh, keep, keep clicking whether, whether to see whether this, is it worthwhile doing this? Of course it's not easy, but is it worthwhile? That's the only question we we'll ask, okay. So dear devotees, as I end this session, as I end this session, go on. Go on, go on. Go on. Okay, I, I, I brought you some little gifts, okay, dear devotees. The moment Swami, uh, Swami's, uh, what, uh, after Swami uh, what, uh, went off, uh, left his mortal coils, I was asked to speak at different, different centers. You know, in one Chinese center, when I went, dear devotees, I, I saw this particular, particular thing here. And I brought this, this, uh, this copy for you. you know, for, uh, go, go, go back, below one, go back one. I was stunned to see, dear devotees, on the back of the little card here, is Baba's picture on it. There was this, this message. I know who picked it and printed it, okay? This could have been Baba's speech many years ago, but this could have been a speech he made just one hour before his passing away. Look what it said. You are my own. I will protect you as the eyelid protects the eyes. I'll never leave you and you can never leave me. Be happy. There's no need to worry about anything. Whatever is experience, whatever happens, know that this avatar built it so. From today, you will accept love as the very mission of your life. There's no greater mission than this. So this is, I, I give, leave it here for all of you to take if you want it. And also, I've got a little card here that talks about Baba's final message to everyone. There's moksha and how to get moksha will be quoted this year. And you can just have it with you, okay? 
Dear brothers and sisters, I thank you for being. Uh, but finally, where is Prema Sai? Everyone want to Prema Sai? I'll tell you why Prema Sai. It's what Swami expects. Every one of us is Prema Sai. Don't look for another Prema Sai, okay? Let us become Prema Sai. <coughs> Dear brothers and sisters, go, go. Finish. Go, go. And that is, that, this is, uh, finally, all of us, all of you have seen this picture. Baba's, suppose Baba's final farewell. Go, go. Everyone thinks it's Baba's final farewell, okay? Dear devotees, from my point of view, it is not Baba's final farewell. Go. For me, for me, this was not Sai's final farewell, but his prayer to his devotees. Please, don't let my mission down. Continue my mission. Fulfill my mission. His prayer to us. For me, that was, when I saw that, I realized that was his asking for me. Dear devotees, Sai Ram, thank you very much.